Hello and welcome to Euphoria. Today I'm going to take another look at my Lego City. In particular I want to look at this area over here which is the business district which has been rather neglected up to now and I'd like your help in thinking about some ideas and suggestions for improving this area. This is my Lego City. It's made with a combination of standard Lego modular building sets and my own unique buildings and features that I've designed and built myself. As well as all the buildings, the city layout has squares, monuments, some trees, lots of other features and of course all the minifigs that live and work in the city. This is the main square called Harmonia Plaza that sits at the centre of the city but today I really want to look at this area over here which is the newer business district centred on this little square called Skyline Plaza. We created this square when the Ensgrave building which is this large office building was built and placed in the city. This square was more or less a temporary space in front of this new office building and at that time I didn't pave this area or put street lamps in place. On this side of the square is another office building which I want to talk about later. And on this side is the back of another modular building with this kind of alley space behind. I used to have the Parisian restaurant here, but this was recently changed for the Sanctum Sanctorum building that you see here now. Strange. I seem to remember that the restaurant was on the other side of the square. The square itself is only half a base plate wide, which is a space of 16 by 32 studs. But I think it's just enough to separate these buildings from the row of buildings on this side of the main plaza. But actually, with the pavement outside this building and the space at the back of this building, which is the Sanctum Sanctorum set, there's actually an area larger than just 16 by 32 studs. The square is deliberately this size so that it's placed nice and centrally in front of this large building at the back. Now we have the opportunity to improve this area by adding the paving and maybe some other features to this space. I'm not so bothered about this space on this base plate in front because that's going to have another modular building on it. The first thing that I want your help with is deciding on the paving for this square. I'm not so bothered about this space on this base plate in front because that's going to have another modular building on it. I'm considering how to deal with the space in this square. I've been looking at different options and patterns for paving. If I use the space outside this building, that's about six studs. And also if I use the pavement outside this building, that's seven studs. So all together here, I've got a space that's about 32 by 30 studs. The paving will be made of 2 by 2 tiles, mostly in the standard dark bluish grey that I use for paving elsewhere in the city. 
but I think it would be nice to include some kind of pattern or motif in this square using different coloured or contrasting tiles. But due to the smaller size of the new square, I don't think I can do anything as nice as the patterns in the paving of the main plaza. I kind of want to keep this pattern outside the building here and this curbstone line because that delineates the area for this Ensgrave building at the end of the square. But I do wonder whether to remove this curbstone line here which would allow the pattern of any paving to extend into the pavement in front of this building and at the back of this building to give the impression of a larger overall area. So I've come up with some different options for patterns in the new square and maybe you can help me decide which one is best. There are so many options and possibilities that it's really hard to decide what to do. I've thought about designs with Greek scroll type patterns, with squares in various designs, leading to checkerboard patterns in different sizes, various ideas for cross shapes, circles and diagonal patterns and these are just the symmetrical or regular ones. Which of these designs do you prefer for the paving? I've used white tiles here to make these patterns which gives a good contrast so you can see what they are and would brighten up the square but maybe I could use some other colours what do you think? so what I'll do is I'll put some designs up on the community tab where you can take a look at them and maybe let me know which ones you prefer or maybe you have other ideas and could let me know about those. The next thing I want to look at is this blue building over here. I don't really like it. I haven't shown you how I came up with the design for this building. It was really a quick way of using up parts that I had left over from building the Ensgrave building and some other parts that I had in stock. You can see that it's a facade building, which means it's really just the front half of the building. That means it can sit at the edge of the town layout, up against the wall here, and not take up too much room. I'll take it out over here to the build table, and we can take a closer look. You can see that in fact it's built on a half base plate which is 16 by 32 studs so in effect it's just the front half of a modular building. I've added a back so that you can't see straight through it but it's only about six studs deep and still leaves room for the regular pavement or sidewalk at the front of the building. It even has one of the modular connection points on each side so that it really could function as half of a modular building. I've actually made the building modular at the floor level as well so that the roof and each of the floors are separate modules that are separable and can come away so that I could add an interior. Although, of course, there isn't 
very much room for an interior in a building with this small a footprint. So what's wrong with this building? There's actually nothing wrong with it. I just don't like it. Maybe that's because it was a kind of afterthought and I haven't put as much care into this as my other buildings. But I didn't go through my normal design cycle by developing a concept for the design. And I didn't go through much of a thought process either. didn't develop an identity for the building apart from thinking that I need another office building on this square. So to a large extent this building doesn't have an identity, it doesn't have a name and I don't know what business is conducted here. The building isn't based on a real building but then neither is my larger office building the Ensgrave building that sits next door. It doesn't have much exterior detail and there isn't much interest in the facade. Although I was trying to get some sort of interest through the use of these slopes at the bottom and sloping windows as well as some variety in colours with the white panels in the extended section in the centre here. I'm not sure what's going on with the curved framework on the roof. Again I was trying to use up some parts that I'd obtained but didn't use for the other building. These curves and in fact this whole structure doesn't really have a function and it just ends up looking like some kind of strange handle on top of the building. It doesn't have a proper interior either. That's partly because there's not much room in the building, although I've managed to fit a table and some chairs. But that's also because I'm not really sure what this building is for. I suppose I could fill these spaces with some office furniture, but usually that's pretty grey and boring as well, and really won't improve the look of the building from the outside very much. Perhaps the colours of the building don't work. I've used these teal windows because they were available on the pick-a-brick wall, so I got quite a few of them. And these white frames were also a choice from the pick-a-brick wall, and I've put them just in the centre section here to try and provide a bit of contrast to the facade. It also meant that I could add these double doors in the front section at the bottom here, but I'm not sure that that looks right either. Although it's three storeys, maybe this building just isn't tall enough to sit next to the much larger office building that's next door. Would it be better maybe to make it taller and more uniform, reduce the variety and just make it into a plain skyscraper type building? All of these issues can be fixed and the great thing about Lego is that if you don't like something you can just pull it apart and rebuild it. So let me know what you think I should do with this building. Should I just keep it as it is? Or put some more effort into improving it? Or maybe just give up on this design 
and replace it with something else. I'll see if I can set up a poll on the community tab about this as well so that you can let me know. But anyway, please let me have your thoughts in the comments section below. The last thing I want your help with today is considering the size of this square. Skyline Plaza, as it's called, is a little small and it's more or less surrounded by buildings. There does need to be some circulation space between larger buildings in the business district, so I thought a small plaza like this would do the job. What do you think? Should this business district be expanded to make this larger? Maybe a full base plate for this plaza? Or even one and a half base plates, which would make it the whole width of this building at the back. That would mean reorganising the whole city layout, maybe squashing down the old town side to make room for another half or full base plate over here. Or is this the point where I take the plunge? and just expand the footprint of the whole city. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below. So that's more or less it for this session of thinking about the city. Let me know what you think about these ideas to do with the business district, that plaza, specific layout, and whether to expand that area adjust this area, or maybe just expand the whole city. When I've considered some ideas, I'll do another update to let you know what I'm considering about the changes to the plaza specifically, and all the city layout as a whole. Can't even see this. You probably can't tell, but making this video I've been having terrible trouble with the little remote that I use for controlling the camera during filming and I'm probably going to have to get a new one. So if you'd like to support the channel then why not buy me a coffee? There's a link in the channel header at the top and I'll put a direct link in the description of this video below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and look out for more videos about my builds, my designs, my Lego City and other aspects of the Lego hobby. See you soon.